Surprise, motherfuckers! That's how you clear D boys. I don't want to peek this, but I'm going to go hard. I need ammunition. Hey guys, my name is X Factor, and I hope you're having a great day. You know who's having a better day? Dice LA and Dice Sweden. The past two days on CTE, the community test environment on PC, have been a rubber band and lag fest with servers coming up and down and not being able to be seen in the in game browser quite a few times. So, it seems as if they've upgraded the servers because, according to one dev I had a conversation with, they didn't think they were retail grade servers, which could be part of the problem. And another dev who publicly stated that they seemed to be overworked in the back end was just lagging behind just a little bit. So a new day, new servers, a lot more servers, and no stuttering, lag, or rubber banding for the few rounds that I played on the new Conquest map Fort. Now, this is available in operations and other game modes, and we're going to cover my initial impressions and thoughts while playing some Fort on Conquest over two different rounds. The first one, which you're watching right now, is me just grinding kills with the automatical factory to get the assault unlock. Then the next part is me actually using the 1917 Medic Optical Variant, which of course has all the way up to a two-time zoom on it, and I wrestled with the question, should I back it down to 1.25? So if my FOV looks a little bit different in that footage, that's why. I'm probably going to put it at 1.25. I think in the ending footage, it ended up at 1.5. So, this map, it is a mix of Metro. It is a mix of lockers. But it has a wonderful fluidity to it. There are multiple choke points where the two Zergs come to a head. And let's preface my game style. Whenever I play something like lockers or operations, I focus on the back caps. I focus on going to the weak side of the map and pushing from there. Often running into the enemy Zerg, which has become pretty commonplace in Battlefield Conquest, where 80 plus percent of your team is pushing one way, 80 plus percent of their team is pushing the other way, often in a counterclockwise or clockwise scenario, and sometimes they meet. So a lot of times I try to balance out the map go to the weak part of the map as you see us kind of channeling through to D right now to stop their advancers. A lot of times you will run into their Zerg, but if you delay them, that buys your Zerg time, and a lot of times they can get back capped, the enemy team. So that's actually what happened here a couple times. They never really paid attention to their back caps when we were hitting them, and they just pushed together with one massive group. So the good news is this, there are multiple choke points, but doesn't mean you have to go through them. The beauty of this map is the internal part and then some of the external lanes. You can get up on the high walls, you can go around in multiple spots. If the enemy team or your team is all capped, there are high vantage points that you can actually run 100 plus meters to get around on a flank to at least get to a flag. So as long as you're not all capped for too long, you should be able to make quite a comeback because there are multiple outlets out. And of course, the way Dice redid Conquest. Now, look at my screen. Sub 30 health, a little bit of a red tint there. Pretty tough to see as well. Now the question is this. I only attacked A from the outside once or twice. Is it like lockers working from snow to inside where it's just tough to see, period? That kind of snow wash feeling that you get. Maybe Dice did something similar here. Or is that just the ultimate combination of being sub-30 health with the screen turning red? Which, of course, is something new in Battlefield 1. More than likely, it's Dice slowly starting to tweak the effects of suppression and taking damage. The question is, are they going to go the Battlefield 4 route where they get rid of a lot of the random bullet deviation, flinch, and, of course, some of the optic sway? Or is just something new that they're adding? So be very careful when pushing from that C to A side because that is a tough little push. And as you can see, we are working towards their spawn area. And you can also see how they can push all the way down to the other side of the map there. So the next set of gameplay I have, I'm actually messing around with the 1917 optical. Again, to see how effective it could be because I just unlocked it. And you're going to notice that my FOV is going to change. My zoom level is going to change. I think by default, it's a two times zoom. That's a bit too high for my liking. 
most of my weapons, the vast majority of them, are 1.25, except for the Martini, which is 2, and then any sniper variant I use is 4 times zoom. So I start off at 2, which I believe that is, as he loses his head, and I think I crank it down to 1.5, partially through this footage. More than likely, I'm going to keep it at 1.25. I don't want too crazy of a magnification because I'm just used to seeing things at certain magnifications and that's what I'm comfortable with because this weapon hits like an absolute truck in the head and the chest. Now, to counter that, there's a slow rate of fire. It only has six rounds and it's okay at hit fire. But its real bonus is aiming down sight. It is the optical variant, which gives you a bonus compared to the other 1917, and most certainly not hip firing. It's not exactly a weapon you want to hip fire. So here's another example of us being able to work. Okay, that's a nasty choke point at A. This is a spawn point we figured out. Let's get to the other side of the map. Because the last thing I want to do is go Zerg the Zerg. There you kind of see the beauty of this thing. If you miss your first shot, you're probably dead, and that was pretty much max rate of fire. And again, if you're being shot at, it's going to be flinchy, it's going to be aim punchy, which, of course, may cause you to lose shots as well, as getting undercover, wing another guy in the chest for 53. So it is a two-bullet kill at these ranges, or even a little bit beyond, in the chest, as long as you don't hit something that has damage mitigation like the legs, lower legs, or forearms, or even shoulders. Not exactly sure how much damage mitigation that drops it down to, but it's pretty filthy. Here's another example of these carts. Look around. One behind me that we just walked by, another one to the left. They're everywhere, and they're really good spots to play, as mentioned earlier unless they've got crossbows and lots of nades, which is still pretty common even though DICE has reworked the nade mechanic. Now, they auto-replenish depending on what throwable you have. It can be rather quickly or it can be up to 36 or so seconds. Now, if you're near a big bag from a support player, it is even quicker. I think you can get it all the way down to 12 or so seconds. So remember, Works your timer down if you're near the big bay, you can start running, so maybe you've got it back in 20 or so seconds. So even on the map that we were playing yesterday on Conquest, and there you see some of that flinching and aim punch due to suppression, uh, it's pretty spammy at times. If you get caught in one of the choke points for very long, or you come against an entire squad, you're just going to see your screen light up with red, and the screen shake simulator begins. So that's not a lot of fun. I'd actually like to see DICE make some additional tweaks, maybe so, not so much for the smoke, but definitely for most of the throwables, as it never seemed that peoples were down. And another thing that it kind of complicates is what you can see. So of course the initial explosion goes off, but then you see all this dirt, and then the smoke from that explosion. That makes it extremely tough to see. Now the question that I ask, is that a two-way effect? Because there's times in which that I didn't 3D spot somebody and I could see them perfectly. And they're looking directly at me and they're not pulling the trigger. Nor are they dancing like they're in any sort of a threat. Or basically going to get their face melted off as you see them playing behind one of those cheeky little carts. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out. Because all these different choke points and tunnels, there's a lot of grenades going off. You're nading forward, or you're nading a body, or using incendiary to keep a medic from reviving or pulling off the red tr rev train, or you're trying to delay their push, getting out of combat, hopefully getting a squad mate back, or you're just waiting for more help, whatever it may be. There's a lot of practical uses for nades, not just simply spamming them because there's a bunch of red guys on your map. So here you see another rotation back towards E, which most of these walls can be blown up, so be very careful which wall you sit on. And most of these flags are larger, except for the D flag. The map we were playing the last couple days, that C and D flag was an absolute nightmare. It was shooting fish in a barrel. Eight tanks plus the Char 2C plus multiple planes per team. If you're on the D flag on the map that we played the other day, a plane would pass by and get a 5 to 10 to 12 bang every single time. Or a tank would roll in. He'd call in the pigeon, drop the death from above, and everybody would die. Almost made that flag capturing almost impossible. So that was a nice change of pace. Where most of these flags are rather large. So you do have room to work and breathe and actually avoid some of the nade spam coming into you. 
overall, I enjoyed this map much more than the forest map that we saw in CTE on Conquest. Of course, Operations is a completely different ball game. I think this map would more than likely need very little tweaking for it to be extremely popular compared to what I've been playing. Remember, that's my opinion, and everybody's got different flavors, but the last couple days, way too much vehicle spam on a way too small map for that. If you're gonna have that amount of vehicles, the map should probably be a lot bigger. But one thing that I didn't really talk about is DICE really needs to work on the spawn system for Battlefield 1. Usually there's two small spots that teams spawn if they're defending a flag. That's it, too simple, too predictable, and of course, if you spawn there, you're usually getting shot in the face if a team's all over the flag. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Let me know what you think of the gameplay and, of course, the map, and we'll see you guys soon.